uh, one one big influence at the time um, who influenced me heavily in, in getting involved in in the arts and the various forms of arts and at least getting to know them because I, I come from a business background I don't have an arts or cultural background but I, I've always been interested in, and I got very heavily interested because I was a very close friend of Albert Marshall at the time Albert Marshall at the time was writing poetry I just come back from Australia blah blah, blah. And anyway he introduced me to Louis the minister at the time who was Louis Gallia who, who uh, offered me the, the role. And I think his brief was very clear to me that we know, Chris, that you, are, you don't have, your background is not the arts, and you might not be as sensitive to the arts as we would like you to be. However, we want to, we want to introduce a bit of synergy between business and the arts because of the financial challenges that there, are, there is in the arts community. Um, the only way forward, and this is worldwide, it's, 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 it's known that if there is no, no synergy and no strong financial backing in, uh, in anything in the arts, then it's not going to be performed as it should, and it, it, it deserves better. It deserves better. So my brief from, uh, from Minister Louis Gallia was, was exactly that. Um, that try to incorporate the business element by bringing in sponsorships, by ha opening the coffee shop, which we did downstairs at the time. I believe we made a turnover agreement with the tenants to, to incentivize them to come in here because there was nothing else to work for. So one had to create an incentive and we worked on a, on a percentage of turnover basis. We also worked hard to create a pack to be able to bring in sponsorships, which, uh, which we managed. How, and the second brief, which, which uh, Dr. Louis Gallia insisted on as well, is to find ways of making the, the various forms of art as inclusive as possible. Um, at the time, uh, the, the, the different forms of art, there was a lot of exclusivity in certain areas where a lot of people did not have access. And, uh, and this is how the place was designed, you know. It was designed um, to be able to use as a platform for the various forms of art. And that is how I think it will bring in the inclusivity. I think I always directed my energy towards those that I saw a lot of full potential in so that they could do all the dirty work, <laughs> basically. But no, I had some great people support and, and, who, and who were behind me. So in my business, in reality, I, I don't really do that much myself. I'm fine, I'm the vision, and, 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 and I make sure that I have the right people to implement that vision. But I think communication is the key. In reality, communication, constant communication. At the time, I was a bit of a workaholic. I'm not now, but I was then. And I, I, did, I did want to know everything that was going on. I didn't do it myself, but I want to know so that I could follow up and make sure that, um, that, that there is an end to every story from other businesses as well. Uh, I think it, they also taught me how to try and take on the challenge of, because I went deep into uh, why is Louis Gallia giving me this brief? Or is, it, is it that high a cost to run a creativity center? I mean, is, uh, are the subsidies that difficult to achieve, you know? And, um, and I realized that um, there is a lot, of, a lot in it for businessmen, not only awareness, but also branding and, and giving themselves a good image because they're involved in uh, w whether, it's, whether it's the theater, whether it's dance, uh, whether, whether it's, it's um, art in the form of paintings or sculptures, whether it's the violin. So yes, I think the business community uh, did give us uh, very positive feedback into their involvement, you know, so that, 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 uh, that part of the brief seems to have worked very well. Of course, there were the huge challenges, which, which I was explaining to you before, of, of the running cost of, the, of St. James Cavalier, which was built as a fort. So it was built to keep people out, not to bring people in. It was designed to build people out. So I think Richard England uh, made miracles here.
he made miracles, to transform a fort which was about protection only, and to be able to incorporate all the different forms of art under one roof, it was challenging. I think working with the board and the staff was the easiest thing. Everybody who worked here from Carmen to Chris Gatt and, 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 and a few other people, I think there was only four, five, six people working here when we initially opened. I mean, when we were opening, there was still works going on. So I, th I don't even think the theater was ready when, when we opened in, in, in December 2000. The synergy between the business and the arts itself was uh, definitely challenging because we always wanted more money than the businesses were willing to give. But the relationship with the team over here was easy with the board. The board members were always here. We contributed a lot, so we were here nearly every day. I, I tried to come at least an hour a day or two hours a day uh, at, at, sometimes, but our numbers were low. We didn't have a high complimentary staff, and this place is huge and required, and even the air conditioning was being installed as we moved in, so we didn't really know what we were in for. So it did, I, I, I think, um, the, the beginning, the first year was settling in. We were settling in, but we worked very closely as a team because everybody had the same intention to make sure that this place succeeds. And uh, we, we, we received amazing reviews in the first three years. A lot of people were very excited. We were coming here. The ministers themselves who worked here, no, we got nothing but help from the politicians at, at, at the time when it came to St. James Cavalier because both the Minister of Infrastructure who had to put up the money was very forthcoming, did not delay the process, which where the reputation of government is that a lot of things are delayed, but that delaying process was denied, uh, both by the minister at the time, as well as uh, Dr. Louis Gallia, who they worked very closely together to ensure that we finish in time. But uh, yes, there is the challenge of finding the balance. There will always be that challenge. Uh, but it's also what you have to incorporate in that challenge is the inclusivity issue. Because when you talk about inclusivity, when you're talking about trying to give opportunities to young kids from schools, from band clubs, you might not get such high standards. So it's a matter of how low do, do you want the standard to go? So finding that balance between um, sponsorships, who are partners, partners who want quality, and as well as do not, not, not leaving out not leaving out those, those who want to contribute to the arts but don't have the opportunity because they come from uh, locations where there isn't that opportunity. I think that, that's the difficult part. And what, what made me think at the time was always, I wish we had a second place. I wish we had someone else besides the St. James Cavalier which could have more outside area because St. James lacks the outside area. There's a lot of ways that art can be expressed uh, outside, not only inside under lights, lights, lights. Here it's about lighting, lighting, lighting. Because everything, <coughs> excuse me, everything is, has to be reflected by light. We don't have windows, we don't have anything here. But I think we managed to, 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 um, to go through it and keep climbing up the ladder. I believe over the time the staff complement increased and hopefully it became more organized as well because we were at a time where there was chaos because there was works going on. But I think, I don't think the team has done a bad job. I think they did a very good job of passing, of passing the mantle on to the, to the, to the, who else, whoever took over. No, the staff themselves, sometimes I, I, I catch them cleaning the floors and, uh, and doing the lights, doing the electrical works, and, and we, we just used to do everything we could possibly get. It was new, it was a business at embryo stage. It needed time to, 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 to grow, you know. Well, one, one of the big challenges was the theatre in the round, right here. Uh, 
a lot of theater goers uh, were sulking over it because it's um, it's about implementing change it was the f it's the first theater in the round on the island and a lot of the artists themselves felt uncomfortable performing at the time i don't know how it is today but uh, the th i know that the concept of theater in the round is about inclusivity it is about participation by the by the crowd it's about you know uh, them getting involved in what's going on and and once once that that synergy happens once there is once there is that connection between between the artists themselves and the crowd then the theater in the round works wonders so yes it it has uh, been challenging for for uh, for for those to adapt to 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 change because the St James Cavalier is about change. There was there's no center of creativity anywhere. Even when we spoke to schools and and when we spoke to clubs and, and 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 other places, a lot of them were a bit afraid. They were overawed by the presence of St James Cavalier. But we said no, no. Come and present your products. Come and present your your your, your art and tell us what your talent is. We want to exhibit it. We want to show the island that we want to give opportunity to everybody. Because within that everybody as well, you come across some amazing young talent out of the blues, out of a little village who's unknown, and he or she can blossom. So I think it is our duty. It's our duty to do this. And it's our duty to be able to bring out the potential of artists who never have the opportunity to reach that potential. So I, I fully agree with the concept of having a lot of different forms of art under one building. Because yes, it does bring the arts together. And it does provide a platform for more than one. It provides a platform for the general public. At the same time, like I said, the challenge is again from, uh, from the quality which is probably what you're experiencing today here at St. James Cavalier. You can have quality right up there and then you can have quality right down there. When you see those together in the same room or just a room from each other, it feels a bit awkward because you have a different audience, you have a different target market, you're going to have different reviews. And also some places might not be the right environment for certain forms of art. So that's why I say I, I, um, I, I feel that it would be it would have been great if St. James Cavalier had a big had a big playground around it, you know, because Malta is about color. It's about outside. It's about the life, the sky, everything. You know, I think we don't incorporate art enough in our in our outdoors, you know. And, I'm, and I think St. James Cavalier, with its um, excellent record, can have the infrastructure and the human resources knowledge to know exactly what to do and where to focus. Because over the last 20 years, if, you've kept a if they've kept a record here of what the feedback was from the schools, what forms of art young kids wanted to improve on and where the potential was and where we could subsidize certain forms of art. Even the, the government then gets involved because if this is an area where there is talent and we can grow in this area and we can have international recognition and we can be as good as professionals anywhere else in the world, then it's a good investment for the country as well. Yeah. Not really. It's, it's a bit difficult for me to answer that question because, because I was here for the first three years. So I don't, I'm not, I don't really know what happened the next 17 years. But what, what, I, what I do, I wouldn't have not necessarily changed anything. I think we would have laid the same foundation. I think it's appropriate that this fort is the same James Cavalier Center for Creativity because of its magnificent location. You cannot have a better location <laughs> to me in the whole of Europe as this. So geographically, the flagship is there. It's an amazing flagship. But um, I think I would have incorporated it 
with another inclusive challenge, which I would have kept slightly separate, but as part of the St. James Cavalier. I think operations would have in here would be less challenging if one were to incorporate the inclusivity aspect elsewhere as well, because that way the rooms over here could be uh, a, a structure just for the violin to play or the piano, the theater could be just for the theater, and everywhere would be a kind of in isolation for their own purpose, the gallery, the, the hallway, where there's the galleries, you know what challenges there are with lighting there. Every time you get a dif somebody different displaying their art, you're going to have different forms of lighting. I think one can maybe redesign those areas which have proved to be challenging. And one of the biggest ones I know is the display of, of paintings because of the type of lighting, because of the location, because of the frames, because of everything. To be able to be more, um, more user-friendly. I think trying to have more user-friendly aspects, because the challenge is already big enough as it is. But yes, I, 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 I don't think would, there would have been much changes. I think what is important that the, there's continuous support from the government. I think that is vital. To, to a flagship like this, because we, we, this is so ambassadorial, it's, it's unbelievable. When foreigners come here, we should be so proud that we can display our talents, so many talents under one roof, in such a unique building, which most people in the world cannot have. So no, I, I, there's not much I would have, I think it was a brilliant idea, I think it was brilliantly manufactured by, by, by Richard England, who was given the full support of government. Um, naturally, the, 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 the cost to it was financial, and as well the challenge of running this place. Because it is an old building, it requires continuous maintenance, air conditioning costs are very, very high, lighting costs are very high, cleaning costs are very high, and we had a small staff, so that's why I'm emphasizing on that, but <laughs> we just couldn't manage with, with a small team. This requires, uh, this place does require a big team to, to make it work. I remember one event in particular, but it did not because it left an impression on me. We had a Victor Passmore exhibition. It was, no, the family of Victor Passmore donated a painting to us. And I had to come and make a speech. There was myself, I think there was the minister. And it was right outside the theater, right here it was. It was exactly out here. 19 years ago, I don't know what date it was, and, um, and I was late. I was in a contract and I was late, so I drove here very fast. I parked my car over here, where I do, in the, the, and I came running in. On my way in, I tripped and I broke a little finger, and I broke my little finger, and my finger was broken, it was out of place completely. And when I got up, I didn't feel that much pain because the pain comes afterwards. So I said, I'll just do this, put my hand in my pocket and go up and do my speech and go to hospital. <laughs> so, so that experience, I don't know what I said then, but at least I, I got a few claps. But I had to find an excuse to get out because I was in so much pain while I was talking. I was enormous pain when I was talking. Carmen, of course, is to me a jack of all trades. She's, she was here day and night. She never left. She was here seven days a week. I don't know how she managed. She was doing everything, everything. Uh, and Chris got as well, and Scavone, and uh, I don't know anymore who, who else there was here. We just had one cleaner, I think, one security, and it was just, and the board members, a lot of board members were just unbelievable how they contributed. Uh, so so I, 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 I have fond memories of St. James Cavalier. After three years, of course, I resigned, which is the normal thing to do, and, and I moved on. But I did learn quite a bit about the arts, so I did get more interested. 
and um, and, and I think we should, we all need to contribute to these lovely courses. But um, what I, I I remember many occasions. I used to come watch watch what's piano. I used to come to the theatre. I used to not be heavily involved, but I used to, and I used to be there whenever there were issues. And communication was was to me. I my, my I feel my forte is communication. I want to communicate every issue all the time. Don't send me emails. Talk to me. If there is a serious issue, if it's nothing, if it's normal, send emails. But otherwise, let's talk. Let's meet. Let's talk it. Let's talk it out, and we will find ways forward and solutions how to get things done quicker. But um, oh, I have nothing but fond memories over here. But that particular, <laughs> that part, and I was so excited to see the the, the, the painting that um, that their family, that Passport family, had had contributed to us because I, I mean, Passport such a big name. Always, we, we should be so proud of his connection with Malta. And um, I did manage to say a few words in pain, and then I rushed to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs>
we have to go out and tell people that there is a theater in the round over here by maybe displaying a small theater in the round in front of um, parliament and doing it, doing it, what, whatever. I, I, I don't have the ideas right now, but I'm sure that if one had to build a small team with a small fund to work together with, with um, entities like V18, work together with, uh, with the local council, the Valletta local council, who are very, very, who are very cooperative, extremely cooperative. You have cooperation from everybody here. You have cooperation from the investors. You can work closely with the boutique hotels because they can participate, because it's in it for them because you're bringing people to destination. You can work with the restaurants, with the commercial, with the shops. You can organize vouchers. I, I, there's so much one can do. But take it out to Valletta. Take it out to Valletta. We are your flagship. You know, we, 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 we hold the flag of Valletta. We're right at the end of Valletta. Okay, we're closed in, but we're coming out, you know. I, I, things, uh, things like that, I would, I would put my energy into that, which is what I do. I think it's important that, that, um, that one creates relationship with, with, other, with, with other entities outside the island who are professional as well. And, and that's what one can synergize. We can learn from them and they can learn from us. And giving again, this is this is a proper, a potential platform where the inclusivity part comes in. Why not give an opportunity to young talent, young boys and girls who are either natural artists or natural dancers? Why not send them on a on a, on a scholarship, on a two-three year scholarship in Perugia or in Milan, where they can where they can learn from very professionals who have been very successful and where they could never in their life dream of being able to afford such training. So training costs money. So if we are trained by the best, I think it's important that that should maybe fit into the brief of St. James Cavalier, you know, that we are going to try and make stars out of some of these young Maltese people who have no clue how good they are and have no clue what their potential is. Because that's the reality. Most artists everywhere worldwide, a lot of huge good artists don't know what their potential is and they don't know how far they can go. How can they know? Their parents can't know, nobody can know. You can only find out if you're going to make a professional dancer is if you are trained by them, otherwise you're never going to know. So yes, I think that platform in itself and um, putting it a lot of energy on making St. James Cavalier an international center of creativity. And that way we can also receive people from outside because we have a lot to teach ourselves as well. Uh, we have some amazing artists who, who, and, uh, who we, we, we can also contribute to the improvement of, of young talent. Mm -hmm.